Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you a simple tool that I made for removing and installing Volkswagen VR6 valve spring uh, retainers. Uh, it's a simple piece of one inch square steel tubing that I simply did a little cutting on. Um, I did some reinforcing on the edges just so it wouldn't bend. Kind of slapped it together, it took me about 10 minutes, very easy. It fits directly over the spring caps on the VR6 engine. And to do the compressing, uh, I use a standard 6 inch C clamp. I put the screw end of the clamp on the actual head of the valve. I then slide in the little tool that I made. You want to make sure to line up the head of the clamp so that as you are compressing, the clamp doesn't accidentally start pressing against the cam seats. Uh, you can damage those seats because they are aluminum and your clamp will most likely be made out of steel. And if you do that, you probably should just find another cylinder head. But once you compress it down uh, far enough to uh, cause some slack around the keepers, you can put a simple tool like a screwdriver inside there and kind of knock them loose. This is what they look like when they come out. And then as you back off, the spring retainer cap will simply come the rest of the way out. And as you can see there, the two springs, this is the, the 2.8 VR6 that's used in a Mark III and the uh, Mark IV, not the 24 valve, obviously. And then you just simply push the valve out. And sometimes you have to give it a little twist to get it to go past the seal. Here's a quick way to check and see if your valves have been bent in any way. These are interference engines. Once the valve is released from the spring tensions, you can just turn it by hand, gently spin it inside the guide, and you can see this one here, this valve's nice and flat. It seats nice and solid. Now the reason that I had to make a special tool is for putting the valves back in. A lot of people can just put a socket over top of the uh, spring retainer cap and just bop it several times with a hammer and it'll compress it enough to kind of pop the keepers out but putting them back in you can't do that you have to hold the springs at tension set the keepers in and then the keepers will align themselves with grooves on the end of the stem of the valve and that's why i had to make this tool with the wide open sides here i'm making sure that the base of the clamp is positioned over the valve. Didn't quite give me enough room to slide the tool in. My clamp had to be open to its absolute widest in order to give enough room with the spring tension completely released. So here I'm starting to compress it down. Take your time, make sure that it's not pressing against the stem of the valve because you can't actually bend those stems. They're not quite as strong as you'd think which is why when the piston comes up against them, they, they bend nice and easy. With the clamp that I had, um, all I had to do was compress it to where the arm of the clamp uh, basically rested just about to where it would touch where the valve cover seal goes along there, kind of where my finger's knuckle is at right now. You would just compress it down to there, and then I use a magnetic screwdriver just kind of hang the uh, one of the keepers and I simply drop it in doesn't really matter where you do uh, drop them inside there uh, once they're in there they can't really fall anywhere but I use the magnetic screwdriver to kind of drop them in and then I use a small wooden dowel something that is not magnetic to kind of shuffle the keepers into position because at this point, the spring cap uh, is pressed way down over the valve, and the valve is actually, the stem of it is sticking up 
uh, a good quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. And so the ribs that the keepers slot into are easily accessible. And so all you're doing here is laying the keepers up against the stem so that they look, uh, if you look at the valve that's still uh, closed over to the right side of the screen, the keepers are surrounding the shiny portion of the valve there. And then there's like a little dark groove. That's the gap between the keepers and the actual spring cap. And so inside the little uh, tool there, the stem of the valve is actually sticking up. And so you can slide those keepers into where that groove will be. And mine have just a little bit of assembly oil still stuck to them. And so they kind of stick to the side of the uh, valve stem. You do have to have some patience here um, and a fairly steady hand. You know, don't drink a whole bunch of caffeine and try to do this. It, uh, you'll just get frustrated. But you can see there, just gently line them up. And once they sit mostly in position, see now you very carefully and very slowly back them off. Just a couple of turns. Uh, will all be all you need to really get them to stay put. As you can see, I, I ended up moving just a little too much and it knocked one of those loose. So now I'm gently you know, making another adjustment there. It is definitely not as easy as they like you to think and even the fancy tool, the one that's like $150, um, even that tool it's still not terribly easy to line these uh, up. So make sure you have your patience. Keep in mind if you're you know, doing a full set of seals on this engine that there's only 12 of them. It doesn't take all day long. Uh, I think it took me about a half hour uh, to replace all the ones that we were doing in this particular engine. This was a timing chain uh, engine, unfortunately. So now I'm able to back off the tension and I believe uh, this particular one I looked, you can kind of see inside the hole there that one of them's dropping back out. I believe what happened is one of them hadn't lined up in the correct slot and was actually slightly too low, and it wasn't sitting where it needed to to properly uh, seat itself. So I had to kind of knock it loose. This is a really good angle here to just kind of see what you do. Just very gently move those in. You make sure not to use something magnetic because these uh, are so light that you'll actually just, it'll stick to whatever you're using to move them around. And that's why I use the wooden dowel is you can just kind of push them. And then the oil that is on them is enough to make them sort of stick to the valve. And then you're able to back it off. And as you can see now, they are sitting in there nice.